Hey everyone, welcome to the Neo Marketing Podcast. It's a special edition today. Pritch is off for spring break. One of the benefits of being a college professor, but I have two special guest interviews, about five minutes, very different from each other, but both very interesting. Welcome to the weekly Neo Marketing Podcast, featuring one half of the Golden Group C Suite, Kyle Golding, and Pritch Pritchard, APR PRSA Fellow. First, we have Diana Rogers Jager from Love to Appreciate going to speak to us about creating a culture of appreciation and what it does for your bottom line. Very important. And then we have Joe Hendricks from Mariner Wealth who's going to talk about what we do with some of the profit that we make in order to make long-term plans with it and so things to think about because of new tax laws recently passed by the federal government. So two interesting topics, five minutes each on each one of them, and then Pritch will be back next week to tell us all about how spring break went. So here we go with our first special guest, Diana Rogers Jager. Hey everyone, welcome to the special guest section of the Neil Marketing Podcast. Today we have Diana Rogers Jager. She's going to talk to us about loyalty in business. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. So tell the folks a little bit about the culture of appreciation and how it relates to business customers and employees. Okay. So in my business, Love to Appreciate Consulting, I specifically focus on working with organizations to build a culture of appreciation. Now why is that so important? It's because when people feel appreciated not only for the work they do, but who they are, good things happen. You increase morale you increase productivity and you increase retention, which is that loyalty piece that you're talking about. And with career builders saying 40% of people are looking to change jobs in 2018, retention is huge because it's so expensive to find, hire, and train up employees to replace the ones who leave. And culture is a great competitive advantage advantage for businesses because it's not something you can easy, co easily copy, right? You hear someone's offering this salary or this pay down the road, you can match it as a business, but if you hear they have this amazing culture where employees are happy and satisfied and really enjoy working there, you can't just copy that. And culture so. has really become more important and relevant in business development now, right? Because yes. the, uh, people are understanding it's not just paychecks and even right. more so for the younger employees, right? Yes, millennials, for sure. And interestingly for them, a lot of people would think about appreciation from their supervisor. Really for millennials, they really want peer-to-peer -peer appreciation because for them it's being part of a team and being connected to the people at work. So for them that's actually what's more important. I mean supervisor appreciation is good too, but they want it from all places. So it's not just a traditional does your boss appreciate you or does your manager appreciate you. So obviously it is much more cost effective to retain yes. employees and to retain clients and customers, right? As right. opposed to attracting new or having to go through that process right. every time, right? Right. So that's the importance of mm -hmm. a program like what you're doing uh, for business owners to do a better job of keeping clients and employees. Yes. And you know, something I want to differentiate because sometimes people lump appreciation with recognition, but it's really different because recognition focuses solely on behavior performance. And it's usually, you know, your top 10%, like who's doing the best? Well, that's great. I definitely agree you should have recognition programs, but not everyone can be in the top 10. You have those solid employees who are dependable, who do great work, but they're never going to be in your top 10. So you have to find a way to show that you appreciate them and that they're a value to your company. And so appreciation can really hit those people too. So creating a culture of appreciation yes. in addition to yes. recognition and then also just being a great solid place to work, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> that makes a great combination for a successful business. Appreciate mm -hmm. you stopping by the Neil Marketing Podcast today and letting folks know about uh, these types of things they need to think about when they start or run a business. That's right. Thanks, Diana. Hey everyone, it is special guest time here on the Neo Marketing Podcast. Today I'm talking with Joe Hendricks from Mariner Wealth, and we're going to talk specifically about why entrepreneurs, business owners, and people who are having success in the world need to be thinking about their personal wealth management. Good to see you this morning, Joe. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about what you guys do at Mariner Wealth, okay. specifically for entrepreneurs okay. and business owners. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. This is great to be here. You know, I love working with entrepreneurs. They are probably one of the most fun groups to work with, in a sense, because they're always thinking outside the box. 
it's always this creativity of, okay, here's the kind of uh, conventional wisdom on, on what this is, and, and I'm an accountant, so I approach it with the Excel spreadsheet, and then they come to me and say, no, we can't do Excel, we got it, let's talk through this. Um, so entrepreneurs are, are a fun bunch because, um, you know, one is the creativity, and two is um, there's a lot of things you can do for them. Um, you know, if you think about, I'm, I'm going to use an example of we're, we've got a business, we're making toasters. And so entrepreneurs focused on their business. They just, that's just the way it is. Right. They're, they're worried about making sure that their sales team is generating enough leads and keeping the pipeline and they've got their operations group, which is making, making the toasters. Then you got to worry about your sales or your shipping and delivery, so you're getting all that out. So it consumes them. The minutia. Yes. <laughs> the day-to-day yeah. -day grind, yeah. right? Yeah. And for a lot of them, all those roles is them. You know, they're the sales sure. team. Yeah. They're, the, they're the operations team. They're the, the shipping and delivery. And and so there's a lot of needs that they have, especially on the personal life. And, and that's really where we come in as help on the personal side. But if you think about it, a lot of the, the wisdom or the advice that I give for our clients is you have management teams. Your business has a management team, or it should. If, if somebody's going to buy you, yeah. you, know, you, they don't want to buy you, they want to buy the company. You sure, you've got to have a system in place. Yeah. And, and an area that's often neglected is the management team for their personal life. That a lot of them don't, they just don't have the time nor the interest to really focus on that. So um, I think a thing to take, talk about today is your personal management team. Who, who's your team of advisors that's working with you that's taking care of you? And I tell every entrepreneur client I have, let's build this team if we don't have it. So that team's generally gonna be your CPA, your banker, your estate planning attorney, or, or your general attorney. Sure. Um, they might do both. Yeah, take then, care of that legal. To care, yeah, absolutely. And then your wealth advisor. Yeah. And so that's where I come in. So a little self-serving there, but I think it's an important role. But if you think about it, your CPA, uh, you need to be thinking of taxes. Um, you know, I think that a lot of uh, individuals that they just, they want to make sure they're paying enough, but not too much. Well, what happens there is there's not the planning that needs to go into it. Um, to avoid those surprises, right. and, to, and, and it's so. And those you, things are changing, right? New laws are happening. Absolutely. We're getting the, the, I mean, the tax cuts. The tax, it's all. It's all changing. Right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the changes that we had effective January first of this year really, I mean, widely changed tax laws. Right. And um, I think it's one that there's a lot of areas of opportunity for that, but there's also um, a lot of unknowns. Sure. And so, um, so I think an area that, that there is probably a lot of entrepreneurs are getting uh, advice. From different people on what to do, and there's a lot of it is you got to do it right now. Got to do it. Right now. And being an entrepreneur, a business owner, uh, and even owning in a, portions of companies, whether it's owning stock or owning a percentage mm -hmm. in, in deals, mm -hmm. it's just so much more complicated now than it maybe was 10, 20, 30, absolutely. definitely 50 years ago, yeah, right? Absolutely. And so it's even more complicated. You much, you very much need outside experts to sure. be helping you manage all that. Yeah, right? absolutely. Well, and, and it's getting more complex, there's more structures, there's more ways to do things. And so it's easy to get something set up where, you know, you do it today, five, 10 years from now, you look back and go, oh gosh, you know, this isn't what we expected to happen. And deals are going faster now too, yep. right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Happening faster, turning over faster, yeah. uh, the, the rise up and the fall off is a lot faster. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, and you don't, um, and with that speed, it doesn't sometimes give you enough time to do your diligence right. on, is this really what I want to happen? And so having that team of advisors that already is familiar with your life, your company, your, your personal life, your family, sure. your goals, have them integrate and have them work together and empower them to do that. And that's something that, you know, our role with, with working with clients is really of, of putting it all together. We generally are going to have more touch points and more time with our clients than a lot of the other advisors. And so we help coordinate all that. And I think having, and just whoever that might be, empower that person or that individual or that team to manage that process for you. I think that entrepreneurs are generally they're, they're good at delegating in a sense that as long as they, you get that trust, I think they're going to delegate to you. Sure. You need to get that trust. Successful ones. Successful ones, yes. Ones that are so far in and control everything, you know, that's sometimes... They're always going to limit themselves, and so they're probably not a really likely candidate. But, yeah. but someone who's really thinking about building something long-term sure. yeah. uh, with, with large vision is going to put together a great team. Absolutely. And that team will benefit you in the long run. And, and you know, the, the other side is... Having somebody that knows that knows everything is good in case something happens to you. Right. I mean, if you get to where you get in a car accident and you know, having forbid you pass away, or you get to where you're unable to manage your own affairs, having somebody that's already involved 
can just kind of seamlessly take over and continue uh, that process for it. Which is the ultimate goal of entrepreneurs and business owners yeah. uh, and, and all of us who provide for our family, right? Yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, we're not doing this to because it's fun, whether it is or not, but yeah. we're doing it to provide for sure. our family. Absolutely. So the long-term vision of, of yeah. being able to not only manage your wealth, but make sure you can guarantee and protect it at the same time mm -hmm. uh, is definitely yeah. a huge bonus. Risk there. management. That's right. Yeah, that's a big area where we do is it's managing all those risks. All right, folks, you know, we always talk about systems and putting a team together and collaboration on the Neo Marketing Podcast. This is another great example of what Joe's talking about, what Mariner Wealth does, about how building a team of outside experts to help your personal wealth along with your business assets is a very smart idea. Appreciate the input today. Yeah, Thanks thank for you. dropping by the Neo Marketing Podcast. Thanks, Scott. And that's a special edition of the Neo Marketing Podcast this week. Pritch is on spring break vacation. Good for him. But we had two special guests, including Diana Rogers Jager from Love to Appreciate Consulting, talking about the culture of appreciation, and Joe Hendricks from Mariner Wealth, talking about what we do with all that money we make as entrepreneurs and business owners. Hope it was insightful and helpful for you. We'll see you next week on the Neo Marketing Podcast. Until then, good luck. <laughs>